All right, what's up? Today we're talking about delitting uh, processors. A lot of people are scared of it. A lot of people think that it's something that only like hardcore overclockers can do or whatever, but it's actually really, really easy. It's easier than most things involved with building a computer. It's easier than popping in those freaking IO panels. Um, it's, it's not that hard at all. As long as you've taken like a basic arts and crafts class, like in high school, or, or I guess you take that in grade school, or uni or whatever Europeans do, um, you should be fine to do this. Okay, um, first let's talk about what we'll need hammer it can be any kind of hammer but as long as it's not stupid look you grasp the hammer you hit things um, you probably could use a mallet maybe I don't know I like a hammer any hammer will do knife to cut open the boxes I guess you only need that for the dealer part um, block of wood uh, if, you, if you get a wood um, the bottom if you get a wood if you get a block of wood the bottom needs to be flat because you're gonna be resting this against the edge of, of a surface that's like one sixteenth of an inch. So this has to be very flat here. It can't be damaged or chipped off or anything. Um, and the wood needs to be hard. You should be able you should be able to hit the wood with a hammer without seeing like an indent. Because if you've got a softer wood, like insert whatever dick joke you want there, and, and you hit it and you leave indents, that means that the force is being transferred. Um, one, it means some of the force is being absorbed by the wood and not transferred to the bottom of the chip you're gonna be hitting. And two, it means that this edge is gonna crack when you when you hit a processor, um, when you hit the IHS, that, that edge is gonna crack off, um, which you don't want to happen. Um, what an IHS is and all that, we'll talk about that in a second. So hammer, hardwood, I think this is oak. Um, bring your dad with you if you need help cutting this, because if you go to Home Depot, they'll make you cut it if it's below a certain thing. So if, if you're not able to do that, if you're not swole as fuck, you might need some help. Um, and then you have a vise. Um, some people get really expensive vices. Vices? Is it vise? Vices? I don't know. Um, some people will get a vise that's very expensive. This vise costs 20 bucks. It's got a really poor uh, vacuum rubber grip on the bottom. It doesn't even attach to the table well. Um, a vise that's as cheap as this, I think I bought this for 15 or 20 bucks. This will work um, for what I'm doing. All I do is I set it on the table, I rest this part of the vise on the table, and then and all of the force is transferred into the chip because this is all resting on the table. Um, some, don't, the one, the biggest and most important thing about the vise is that these grips on the end need to be straight and they need to be made of something hard. A rubber grip could cause your uh, chip to fall out or explode or something bad. Um, it, they have to be something solid because it has to be able to hold it in, hold something very, very small in place um, while, while you're hammering away at it with your wonderful pink hammer. Um, yeah. Um, and then you need a little towel because to wipe the sweat off, you finish your exhausting work. Also, to catch the chip after you hit it off so that it doesn't fly onto the table and it shatter into a million pieces, although that won't happen. Um, we will use this later, though, to wipe the chip off when we're cleaning it. You need some kind of a chip. I have three 4770Ks here. Um, you can delid Ivy Bridge, which would be like 3570K, 3770K. You can delid Haswell, which would be like 4670K, 4770K, or whatever, all those. Um, you cannot delid Sandy Bridge. You can, but it would take a lot more effort, and that's beyond the scope of this, and there's no reason to anyway. Um, you need this stuff. Um, you don't need any of this stuff, but you should have this stuff. This stuff is Liquid Pro. We're gonna be applying this on the computer die once we rip the lid off, because this is a 100% metallic alloy compound that will uh, facilitate heat transfer better than any uh, thermal interface material once we apply it. And this is 91% isopropyl alcohol. It's good for wiping stuff off, and it dries off very quickly, which is also good, um, because we don't want nasty residue all over the place, right? Okay. So let's talk about what's going on here. Um, for whatever reason, at one point in time, Intel thought it would be a good idea to stop doing something that they'd always done that was really good. What Intel used to do with processors, well, for most of them, there were a couple series that they didn't, but for most processors, what Intel would do is they would solder their chips together, okay? So in a normal CPU, you have this thing, this, this, um, the, the, the green board, it's called the PCB, that's the printed circuit board. 
On top of that board and underneath this IHS, this integrated heat spreader, um, you have the computer die. Typically in the past, what Intel would do is they would attach that die to this IHS by soldering the die. They would solder the top of the die and then they would plop that IHS down onto it and you would get a rock solid connection. Um, good heat transfer, all the heat would be moving from the die to the IHS. Um, even if you removed that IHS, even if you removed the integrated heat spreader and did a direct to die cooling, the temperature gains weren't even that good, um, maybe a few degrees, because that soldered connection was so good. Um, however, recently, what Intel has decided to do for God knows what reason, instead of actually soldering the die to the IHS, they use a thermal interface material, and then they put this uh, layer of glue on the, on the edge to glue down the IHS onto the, mother, onto the uh, PCB. And what happens is, because of the glue that they use, the contact between the die and the IHS is not optimal. It's not, it's not what we would want in a processor that we plan to overclock. If you have a stock chip that you plan on leaving at stock speeds and you never plan on overclocking it, that seal will be fine for you. Um, nothing terrible will, will happen as a result of that. If you plan to overclock though, what's gonna happen is you're gonna run into a temperature wall far before you reach the voltage wall on the chip because of your inability to cool that die. And I, I can show you more what we're talking about when we actually rip apart a couple of these chips. And we'll be all the better off for it. Okay, so we've got our three chips. Um, we understand that the three main parts that we're concerned with are the PCB, the green part, the IHS, uh, the PCB, which is the printed circuit board, which is the green part that everything rests on, the IHS, which is this nickel-plated plate that goes on top of the chip. It's the thing that people see that they probably think is the CPU. And then underneath that IHS, the integrated heat spreader, is the computer die, which is where the actual architecture of your computer chip is housed inside. Um, Uh, I could use the vise on this table. I wouldn't be able to do it on the tablecloth. I'd have to go underneath it. But since this is glass underneath, there's a high probability that by hammering on it, I'll crack it. So um, typically your best bet is you have to think about the vise in terms of the work it's going to be doing, right? If you've got something held in place by a vise and you're hammering it, you need the vise to be 100% stationary. Because if you're hammering away at it and the vise was on a pillow, what's gonna happen is the force that you transfer with the hammer is going to travel through the vise and just bounce up and down on whatever surface you have it on. So the vise has to be resting on a very solid surface that isn't gonna give it all when you hammer away on it. So I wouldn't suggest putting in it, like I've got a drafting table in front of me, I wouldn't use that. Um, but I do have a, I don't even know what kind of countertop. It's covered with some kind of stuff. I'll use a countertop because the countertop is nice and solid and that will give us a good surface to hammer away at stuff on. Oh, let's see if I can balance my camera. Okay. So, I'm going to vacuum seal the vise to this countertop. Open this up. Now, in terms of this being tight or whatever, it honestly doesn't matter because we're not going to rely on this to keep this vise stationary. What I'm going to be doing with this particular vise is resting it on the table or I'll take countertop so you can see that this is actually sitting here. Um, I'll tighten it so that it doesn't wiggle the side to side, but for the most part, as I'm hammering away on this, everything, all, all the force of me hammering it is coming down and it's stopping right here so that I don't have to worry about losing any of the work the hammer is doing. Um, as always, I've already grounded myself in my computer case. Um, make sure that you're grounded before you work on stuff like this. Don't uh, drag socks across the carpet and then, you know, whatever. You can set a cloth here if you're worried about the um, PCB dropping and breaking or something. Although, to be honest, you could drop it on pretty much anything. There are no moving parts inside. It should be fine. Move this a little bit. 
Oh, I guess that's that thing. Oh, that didn't help at all. <laughs> okay. I think you can see the important stuff. The only downside to doing this is you have to invest the initial investment in the vise and the hammer kind of sucks. Although you should have a hammer somewhere around the house, right? Um, let's talk a little bit about this real fast, sorry. OK, so we have our computer chip. IHS, integrated heat spreader. That's this nickel plated thing on top. PCB, that's the printed circuit board, which is the uh, green thing, greenish bluish thing. And then underneath this IHS, you've got the computer die, OK? If you look on the computer chip, you can see this ridge right here. Oh, that focus. This ridge is going to be what I'm grasping with the vise. This ridge right here. Not the one beneath it, not the PCB, but this ridge. Um, you might be able to do it on the other parts, but that, that's the part that I prefer to grip. And that's what's always worked for me. So I've got the vise holding that in place. I'm going to tighten this. Um, so it looks a little lopsided right now. Hold on. I'm sure. Okay. All right, so it looks like it's held in place pretty well. Um, so in terms of mistakes that you can make here, um, block of wood is going to go right here. So oh, that edge is a little messed up. Eh, I guess we use this side. I've used this black of wood quite a bit. Um, I sh I've got two others. I should probably get one of those pretty soon. So in terms of mistakes that you can make um, when hitting this block of wood, I guess you could miss and hit a finger, which would suck. But really, the only possible way that you could break this chip is to just full on like hit it from the side. Um, th this is what I talk about when I say this isn't really that dangerous. Like there's, you would have to try really hard to break a chip in a vise like this. Um, in terms of the block being here and the hammer going here, there, even if the block slips, although I wouldn't recommend it, because these are all contacts on the bottom and not pins, that it shouldn't destroy the chip, although don't recommend that. Because I guess if you did it perfectly, you could like scrape off some of the transistor stuff on the bottom, so don't do that. But regardless, I'm holding the block of wood in place, and then we just give it a few good hits. It, the, if you do this, it's never going to come off. It, it does require a bit of force. Don't be scared. And typically what happens when you hit it is it will fall onto place. That one came off um, a little bit more gracefully, I guess. But typically it'll just fall. So when you finish, you've got you can see that black edge around, that epoxy-based glue, whatever stuff. That's the stuff that has to be peeled off with your fingernails or a plastic card. We'll get into that later. Um, that's the stuff that's messing up your temperatures. Because what happens is that stuff is on, it, 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 I guess the coating is too thick, such that it hampers the contact that you actually get between the bottom of this IHS and the top of your uh, CPU die. So that was one. And this will be number two. And again, I've used this block of wood much. So when I'm looking around at this wood, I'm just looking for uh, an edge that's incredibly straight. So like you can see, like I've used this a lot. Um, it's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but this is getting a little bit messed up there. But an edge like this looks pretty straight and unused. So
Oops, hold on. So my vise is kind of sliding a little bit. So I'm going to retighten this. Um, I guess another way you could break the chip is if you see stuff sliding a lot, you need to go back and make sure that everything is remaining tight because you don't want that to happen, I guess. And this one came off pretty easily as well. Untighten that. And the bottom of that looks just like the um, bottom of the other one. We usually don't do multiple D lids in a row, so I'll go back and make sure everything is still tight. Secure my vise for the third chip. Put my block of wood back. Whoops. So that's pretty, that should be the worst thing that can happen is if your vise wasn't tight enough, the chip will just slide out. If it happens, oh, just pick it up, put it back in, make sure it's tight enough. Lock of wood in place. And if you feel it start to give a little bit, it means you can probably just peel it off. If that ever happens where the chip slides out, it just means you need to retighten the vise. Um, you can drop it or throw it. The chip's not going to break. Um, or it, I mean, it shouldn't, unless you throw it incredibly hard, I guess. All right, so we're done with all of that stuff. Um, one of the tools uh, that I should have showed you um, is some kind of a card. It can be a credit card, it can be a wh whatever, just any kind of plastic card will facilitate the removal of this gunk that we need to get off now. So. All I'm gonna do now is this black, nasty, gunky buildup around the chip. I'm just gonna take my fingernail and start peeling it off. Um, if you don't have any fingernails and you can just start off with the plastic card, um, Neither the plastic card nor your fingernail will be strong enough to damage this chip. Um, when I say damage, I mean like cut through the, um, the material of the PCB. We can thank the rock hardness scale for that. Rock? I think that's how you pronounce the name, right? More like Brock's hardness scale, am I right? Once you've got the majority of the gunk off, you can easily get off of your fingernail, then you can just um, come back with the card. And now I'm just going around with Haswell chips um, they integrated some stuff that used to be on the board into the chip these little things on the side all right I'm sorry they're really hard to see I guess these little things on the very side um, be careful not to scrape them I, I I doubt that you could take them off with a credit card, but don't try. <sighs> if
if you're um, if you're considering whether or not you need to do this, like I said, if you're going for a stock, um, for a completely stock chip, you don't plan on overclocking or anything at all, you don't need to waste your time with this. But if you are going to overclock, um, I I personally I think this is imperative. Um, the the temperature gains are are too great to ignore. Um, literally, like. If you only see a 15 degree gain, that would be low. That would be on the low end. A lot of people see 20 to 25 degree gains on, on their load temps on their chip post delitting. And, and that's just, that's too large of a gain to just be ignored, you know? Um, the buildup left on the bottom of the IHS, which is what I'm going over now, usually isn't that big, so I don't even use my fingernails on that. I just take the card and I just go around and I... Once you feel, once you feel like you've gotten the majority of the gunk off, you can take your isopropyl alcohol. You can go back and you can wipe everything down. As you're wiping things down, if you noticed any black gunk you missed, just take your credit card, go over it again. I'm cleaning off the bottom of my IHS. Since I have multiple chips here, I can actually show you the difference between what a prepared chip looks like and what a freshly delitted chip looks like. So on this chip, you can see all of that black, nasty gunk, saying if it'll refocus. Refocus, camera? Whatever, even if it doesn't refocus, you can easily see all of the black, nasty gunk around the chip. And the IHS itself is a little cloudy because of all the thermal interface material stuff. And then we compare that to our chip where we removed all of the black nasty stuff and the dye itself is uh, very clear. 
um, we can almost read the computer screen, the reflection, right? Um, and then for the most part, we've you can still see an outline of where the black gunk was, but for the most part, you can see that it's gone. Um, as long as it's not like sticking up out of the thing, it's okay if there's a little outline left there. And then we compare the bottom. Um, so the only gunk that we have to remove from the IHS is this bottom part that comes in contact with the PCB. This gunk that's stuck inside, you don't have to remove that. It's not going to touch anything. It's irrelevant. Um, if you want to, I guess you can, but there's no reason to. It's just more work. Um, so we can see where I've removed the thermal paste on the bottom and the black gunk on the borders. You can compare it to this one where you still see all the black gunk on the borders. Uh, difference, right? And then one more time for these side by side. See a pretty clear difference between the delitted one over here and the delitted one over here. This one's been cleaned, this one hasn't. Oh, I just tried my phone. Rip on, phone. Ugh. Um, so I'm going to go through these two chips and I'll do the exact same thing, but I don't have to do that right now. We'll look at the, um, we'll look at the thermal pro, uh, the liquid pro, uh, thermal interface material application process before we, before I go into those other chips. All right. So I'm going to clean off the tip of this or the, the top of the IHS, uh, the top of the computer die. <laughs> Sorry. One more time. Um, to make sure that it's, there's absolutely no dust or bullshit or breath or anything like that on there. This liquid pro material is very, very, very special. If you've never used it before, I, I very highly suggest doing a trial application on something else laying around, um, whether it's on a, on a napkin or a, on a, anything, a little sister, just not this yet. Um, because you want to be familiar with working with this very awkward material. Saw a little Aslan hair on that. Hold on, let me wipe that down again. And the ideal amount of this stuff that you want to use is very, very, very small. Um, it's not like thermal paste where you're just going to goop it around. You're going to spread this yourself. Um, it, it, it comes with toothpicks included, or toothpicks, Q-tips included. I guess you could use a toothpick, but so you can see it's a very, 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 very small amount. And that little itty bitty dot right there, that little tiny dot will be plenty enough to cover this entire surface. You cannot use this as thermal paste because it will dissolve aluminum. If this comes into contact with aluminum, if your cooler uses aluminum on the bottom, it will dissolve it and it will become one, um, it, it will become one piece. <laughs> I guess if you're okay with that, technically that connection would be strong, but um,
and you can see that I've covered the entire surface with some stuff, the liquid metal stuff. Um, the notches at the top of the processor will tell you that it's the top of the processor. See those little notches on the side? So I know how to put the cap back on, although to be honest, you could put it on any way you want. Well, um, actually that's not true. Um, you could put it on upside down, but you couldn't mix the, you couldn't rotate it. You could rotate this 180 degrees, you couldn't rotate it 90 degrees. Um, once I have that sitting back on top of there, I'm trying to find, once I have this sitting back on top of here, I'm going to drop it in its little um, case that it came in. And then I'm going to close this up. This is not glued back onto the uh, die. It's not glued there. And if you pick it up incorrectly, or if you drop it, it will come undone. And if that happens, then um, you have to start from scratch. You could probably get away from not starting from scratch, but if you want to be responsible, you should start from scratch. And if you're going to go through all this trouble to delid, you might as well make sure the connection is right. Um, if you screw something up, then if you, um, if you screw something up horribly in this process, then what will happen is when you turn your computer on and you start benching it or stressing temps, then you'll, you'll, you'll see that it's messed up. Um, your temperatures will be very, very, very high for no reason, um, in which case you've got to tear everything apart and start again at ground zero. But um, yeah, otherwise the process for these chips will be the exact same. And if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments and I'll look at the... Um, I should put my face down here. I will, um, I'll, I'll try to answer them in the uh, description of the video if I look anything out. Um, otherwise, thanks a lot for joining me. Rip in peace.